Oh, yes, indeed. We are live, in fact, on KEXP.org, beaming straight to you. This is the afternoon show. My name is Larry Mizell Jr., and I'm joined today in the live room with fantastic L.A. band Dummy. What's happening, y'all? How's it going? Hi. I'm stoked to have you here. We're very stoked to be here. Right on, right on. Well, I see you're raring to go. I won't hold you. Uh, let's get into it. Dummy, live on KEXP. Dummy, live with KEXP.
rocking with Dummy right here on KEXP. You just heard two tracks from their latest, Mandatory Enjoyment, Daffodils, and Final Weapon. Dummy, right here on KEXP. That was Pool Dizzy from there, EP2.
Dummy, live on KEXP. You just heard the beautiful closing track to their mandatory enjoyment, atonal poem. Uh, I love that track. Um, I love how it's got such distinct movements in it. I'm just curious how you work out the shape of a song like that. That's Alex's well, song. That was a really long process. It was, uh, it started, when we started working on it, it sounded completely different. We were kind of doing like this kraut rock mm. outro that was like super explosive. And then when we started working on the record, we were, we decided we wanted to do like an ambient kind of middle section. And then we couldn't figure out what to do at the end. And then we kind of like realized that like a big pop kind of like euphoric moment to kind of send out the record was the, the right sound for that. Agreed. Uh, it, it feels so up. You end on such like a, a beautiful note on that record. And, uh, I know we got some Laraji fans in the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if you haven't peeped, we did a, a live at home in studio with Laraji a few oh, months yeah. back. Got to interview him. Oh, what yeah. a beautiful cat. Um, <laughs> He's great. And uh, I saw, when I saw you guys cite him uh, and like Antenna and Azimuth, I was like, wow, I love these guys. Um, I adore <laughs> all of those. And articles really, uh, I've seen them talk about how you're record collector rock or, or music nerd rock or anything, but how you talk about it and, and the sound. It's so, it's not coy, it's not pretentious like you would associate with that kind of tendency. How do you kind of walk that line? I mean, we just love music. And I mean, we're, I mean, we're first and foremost just like fans of music. And, and um, you know, this project was kind of like us trying to kind of give back what we've gotten out of like all the records we love and all this incredible music. I mean, we're not, you know, it, to us it's a shame that people don't know about you know, the stuff that we're citing, like it should be more popular. That's why we're trying to like shout it out. Yeah, we're constantly trying to signal these to all those incredible, underrated, underappreciated artists. But also like we're a pop band too. Like yeah. and I think that's how we like walk the line of it is like mixing the avant garde and the pop elements together, you know, unpretentiously, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> right. And it's such an interesting line that you guys walk there. Uh, you've got this beautiful pop song craft and you noise it up, you drone it out, muddy it up. And I've, t I've seen you talk about how you hate kind of that crystalline studio fidelity thing. I oh, hear you. Totally. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. And, you know, citing like great pop from the 60s that, that you know, existed before that. And it sounds amazing and yeah. is like the gold standard yeah. uh, for pop. And I know that. Well, one, like, you, I feel like you, you guys kind of refined your attack and your approach and got to this sound. Um, you know, how did, how did you kind of arrive at, you know, kind of combining the chocolate and peanut butter, if you will? I mean, I think it's just, you know, understanding the historical context of music. Mm. Like, you know, loving stuff like The Birds and Patsy Cline and The Velvet Underground, which was all just people in a room recording. And it has, like, this raw, you know... At the time, it was high fidelity, but now it's, you know, it sounds bad, technically sure. speaking. And, but we just, you know, that era of, like, production and songwriting and, like, you know, and also pushing the envelope sonically and musically, that's, like, what we really, like, deeply relate to. And I think that's how those two things have come together. And, the, like, the proliferation of, you know, recording technology, and it's gotten cheaper and cheaper, and, of course, like, more and more people are able to record music and that's like great but at the same time it's created this like homogenization of, of like sonic homogenization where a lot of bands there's like much less character generally speaking in recordings on albums so we we really like set out to be like we're gonna you know make this sound like us and not like the studio or whatever like mm -hmm. we want to put ourselves on the record and some of the most interesting like production stuff isn't coming from guitar music. It's more from hip hop, electronic music, and like, and then also like just underground, like hardcore and punk, like, Absolutely. you know, those are the, like those have the more, you know, full of character recordings and, For sure. and, and like hip hop and new age and all those things have a huge influence on us, like, especially production wise, so. Right on. Um, I know there's a Seattle connection. Somebody was in Talbot Tagora, right? This that guy. was me. Right on. <laughs> me and Charlize were just talking about that. We oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Right on. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Northwest, did I hear that you guys uh, you can't get into Vancouver or something? Yeah. Correct. Uh, I'm yeah. so sorry. What's going on? Is that a COVID thing? I think yeah. it's kind yeah. of. It's partially our own fault for not doing a little more research ahead of time, I think. But the, our promoter let us know that uh, there are new restrictions that we have to get tested 
on top of being vaccinated in order to get there and have like the PCR test and stuff, which we just, we've been like frantically trying to find a place that would do it in the time. We need to get to Vancouver today if we were going to do it. So it's just, I think we're going to try it. It's just the the new, like the new variant, like switch things up real quick. So, you know, it's all good though. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of making life a little difficult for yeah. the entire uh, human race. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of COVID, I know that that was part of that kind of isolation helped you guys kind of refine your your approach as well. You want to speak on that? Well, yeah. uh, the song Pull Dizzy, which was on EP2 uh, that we played, all that stuff was basically recorded on a broken iPhone hmm. that we were yeah. on GarageBand. We did it all at the house, and then we mixed it with our friend Juju, who also mixed Mandatory Enjoyment. Um, and the other record, uh, Mandatory Enjoyment, we split it up. We, some of it was at home when we recorded it with like a laptop and a mic, and a, and then some of it we took just did studio stuff. We kind of explored both home recording and like real recording in a studio to kind of like give the dyna- dynamic of the record. So, I love your all of your loves of music that's so apparent in your process and, and, and the sound that you came out with, uh, but you're not precious about any of it. And uh, also how you kind of clap back at the homogenization y'all were speaking on earlier. Like there's a song on the record that talks about that, right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. What's that one called? Well, it's uh, two of them. Almost. I mean, I guess in a way. This Cloud Pleaser, yeah, cloud and, pleaser and, and Punk Product number four. Yeah. Uh-huh. Both those songs, you know, I mean, they wrote the lyrics, so they should talk about it. <laughs> Punk product's more about the art level of it because I'm also a graphic designer. Right. So that's just like the idea of, hey, can we get you, uh, we're, this, we're this company that is 100% not at all related to punk or underground music, but we like your style of illustration. Can you make this like punk thing for my company? And I'm like, N- I don't want to do that yeah. so that's that's what that song is about cloud pleaser is more about the, yeah the music aspect yeah, cloud pleaser of it. is more just like i don't know maybe a jab at like spotify playlist music <laughs> sure. you know just like checking your discover weekly every week or something your release <laughs> radar and you're just like what is all this stuff right and like yeah yeah same same <laughs> yeah it's, it's nice to if like if uh you know back back in the day we're oh, not yeah. we're not that old but yeah. it's like you know i think we all we all at least were, you know, trolling along on the internet, finding blogs of like people who had kind of similar taste to us and learning, learning from people who had similar tastes, not algorithms that yes. curate your taste for you. The so. organic way, yeah. you know, like yeah. looking at the liner notes and being exactly. like, wow, Red Man is shouting out this guy and this guy. Yeah. I'm going to go exactly. buy their taste. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's exactly. what we, in our record, we have a whole listen to section, which is literally like we hope that, you know, if someone likes our band, they would check out all these bands because to us, all the bands we listed are like inspiring to us. There are current bands because there are current bands that aren't falling into the kind of like normal, you know, trajectory of, you know, indie rock music now. Yeah. Cause there's, t- I mean, there's tons of it out there. You just have to dig. Mm-hmm. And it's that's, I mean, marketable. Yeah. So. It's, you just want to <laughs> dig deeper <laughs> and deeper and deeper. The algorithms, so you have to actually like seek it out, but mm-hmm. people are, I feel like, People in general are doing less and less of that these days. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Spoon-fed all the time. Yeah. Um, So I appreciate a collective like y'all that are so passionate about, like, listen to this, check it out, and exemplifying it. It's so important. That's that's, that's part of the mission of everything we do here, too. And uh, I really appreciate the spirit and what you guys do. So thank you, for real. I mean, thank you for us. I mean, us being here is amazing. Yeah, (laughs) I I mean, we can't. When we, yeah, this is. Our watching. brains are all melting right now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, because your record had mine doing that awesome. a few times. Hell yeah. Uh, and I'm, you know, you're doing the juggling thing like, oh, what are my favorites of the year? And that's a non-ending uh, yeah. slog. But uh, yeah. again, really appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time yeah. coming by. Thank you. Godspeed yeah. on the road. Uh, sorry, Thank you. Vancouver. <laughs> Bad news, y'all. But, uh, yeah. you know, catch them when you can. Yeah. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. Dummy, live on KXP. Thank you so much. This is the afternoon show. KSP, the music matters. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.